welcome to The Kids Are All Right, a weekly podcast especially for kids that's all about health, happiness and wellness. I'm Michelle and here with me are my co-pilots on this podcast, Buster and Buddy. Hey guys, Buster here. Oh yeah, fan favourite Buddy coming at you. <laughs> and we're on a mission to help you all feel great and live happy. Here we go. Hey, hey. The Kids Are All Right. So guys, it's finally back to school time for everyone this week. Are you excited to be back? Yeah, oh, it's brilliant, Michelle. I'm so excited to see my mates again and to get to do PE and sports and all kind of cool art. Yeah, oh, and the drama. There's so many things we get to do. It's going to be brilliant being back. Wow, that's a lot of things you're excited about, Buster. What about you, buddy? Well, uh, I am super happy to see my friends again. And I do enjoy all the extra things we do in school, like Buster said. But, uh, I don't know. I feel a little funny going back this time. I've gotten so used to being at home that now it feels strange to be leaving home each day and being back in a room full of kids. Ah, well, Bully, you know, that's perfectly normal to have mixed emotions. After a long break out of the routine of school, it does take time to readjust and get back into the swing of this routine again. Even lots of adults feel a little anxious, worried, or maybe even a little sad when they've had a holiday and then it's time to go back to work again. Really, Michelle? Yeah, for sure. Well, I do find my stomach feels a bit weird. Oh, quick, Michelle, open a window! <laughs> oh, no, Buster, not like that. <laughs> it feels weird as soon as I get up in the morning and I don't feel like eating my breakfast. It's funny, but I am finding it hard to get used to playing with all my different friends again as it has just been me and my family for so long. Yeah, that is normal, buddy. You know, there are lots and lots of kids feeling the same way you are. And, you know, you've been out of school for such a long time. And then you add in how strange it's all being with coronavirus. It's not surprising you have different feelings about going back. Yeah, buddy. Even though I'm so excited at being back in school, it does feel weird. My brain isn't working the same way it was before. And I'm finding it hard to concentrate and remember stuff. (laughs) Oh, I can't believe I found all this easy before we finished up. Yeah, you're right. Even after normal school holidays, like at say Christmas or summer or Easter, there are so many different parts of going back to school that take time to get used to again. But with everything that has changed because of coronavirus, let's be honest, with the most normal of things not being normal anymore, kids of all ages are finding going back to school tricky in lots of different ways. And that's okay. And it's perfectly normal. Yeah, it's just weird. And the noise of all the kids in the classroom, I'm just not used to it anymore. Yeah. And you're normally the loudest one, Buster. Hey! (laughs) But there is just so much going on. I I feel weird about going back, you know? Yeah, is it any wonder, guys, that kids have mixed emotions about going back to school? It's both excitement and nerves. So we went out and asked you kids to tell us about what you'll miss about being at home all the time and what you're looking forward to about going back to school. The kids say... What? Oh, yeah. The thing... I would like the most about going back to school is probably just seeing my friends. And the thing that I would miss about homeschooling is probably doing baking and stuff. Hi, my name is Madeline, and when I go back to school, I look forward to going to the library and and getting a book and reading it over the week. But what I would miss from home is my family and my chickens. What I'm looking forward to most going back to school, seeing my friends, and what I'm gonna miss about home is lying in in the mornings. What I'm looking forward to most is when I go back and see my friends and teacher. And I'm going to miss homeschooling because I'm going to miss hearing Naomi purr. Naomi is my cat, she's really cute. The thing I am most looking forward to is seeing my friends. The thing I will miss most is spending time with mom and daddy. They light the fire for me when I am doing my homework and give me a chocolate biscuit with my tea. I don't think my teacher will do that for me at break time. What I'm going to miss from homeschool is getting breaks more than at school. In school, we normally used to have to wake up at like seven, but in homeschooling, I'm going to miss waking up at like nine o'clock. And the other thing I miss, I'm spending more time with my family. 
I am looking forward to my friends and my teacher because I don't remember what they look like. And I miss my mama and papa doing work with me. And I love my sister because she was really kind. The kids say, What? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So there's lots of other kids that feel there are good and bad things about being back at school, too. Yeah, exactly. A lot of kids feel the way you do, but you know, there are things we can do to help settle back in and take charge of any worried feelings we may have about going back to school. Oh. So that's why we're so pleased with our expert guest this week with so much brilliant advice to help you guys and other kids settle back into the school routine. It's Dr. Mary O'Kane, lecturer in psychology and education. Mary, thanks so much for coming on the show today with us. Oh, thank you for having me, guys. Hey, 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 Mary. Hey, Hi, Dr. Mary. Mary. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> So Mary, lots of kids find going back to school after school holidays a little tricky. They'll have so many different emotions racing around their heads. But this is really quite normal, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is, Michelle. And it's funny, I've been talking to some children who just went back the other week. And some are so excited. They've they've missed their friends so much and they are really, they were dying to get back in. Others were telling me that no, they had been quite happy at home with their grown-ups and they were quite nervous about going in. Some were dying to see friends, but were also feeling a little bit shy about seeing them again. So everybody feels a bit different and that's perfectly normal. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, even in normal times, I suppose it's it's tricky going back after, you know, a long break from the routine. And we were saying that you know, even adults can feel that way sometimes after, you know, a summer break uh, and having to go back into work. So even adults feel that way sometimes. Oh, definitely, Michelle. I think a lot of the teachers could be feeling it. <laughs> you know, we think we think for kids, oh my gosh, it's you know, such a big move going back to school, having been at home. But for the teachers as well, I'm sure a few of them are feeling a bit nervous about going back. Oh, yeah, yeah, I never thought of my teacher being nervous about going back before. And Mary, going mm-hmm. back to school at this time is also different um, because school isn't exactly as it was before, you know, with the teachers wearing masks and, you know, lots of new rules about what you can and can't do, how you move around the school even how you play in the yard and I suppose for some kids this makes it a little bit more trickier to settle back in it does but you know something guys we have to remember we did this before and remember we were off in the first lockdown Mm. and then everybody had to go back to school and we were all a bit nervous and no one knew what it would be like but this time we can kind of think well hold on look at all the things I do know I know my friends going to be there I know my teacher and I know the subjects I'm going to do and you know what last time we were nervous and we just found our brain and we did it and I think it's good to know if we've done it before it kind of gives us that bit of confidence to do it again hey hey, Dr Mary Butcher here hey uh, so I'm really excited about going back to school I've missed my friends so much but like I was saying to Michelle I just can't seem to get my brain working properly again I'm finding schoolwork way harder than I did before Oh, Buster, don't worry. Do you know why? I We have this little part of our brain right in the middle of our brain, and it's like our body's little alarm system. And even sometimes if we're excited about going back and we think, no, 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 this is good, this little part in the center of our brain, it's called the amygdala, and its job is to keep us safe. And I always picture in my brain like a little toddler sitting in there with a little control station, and he's listening to everything I hear and he's watching everything I see and he's thinking I'm going to keep her safe but sometimes he kind of gets a little bit worried about things that he needn't worry about and that can leave us feeling oh my gosh I'm I'm feeling out of control here and I don't know what's happening and I don't know if I'm doing things right and it leaves us feeling a bit anxious so that might be happening to you a little bit And I think sometimes we need to send a message back to this little warrior that you know it's okay, that you know you can do it. And one of the ways we can do that is to do what we call our belly breathing. And belly breathing is when we take deep breaths into our nose and we breathe right down into our tummies. I don't know, Buster, if you've seen a newborn baby at all lately. Uh, Again, my neighbour only had a newborn baby after Christmas. Ah. Well, you know when you see those newborn babies and they're lying there and they breathe and their tummy goes up and down each time they breathe. 
that's how we should all be breathing. And when we are feeling a little bit anxious, when this little warrior, this little um, alarm system in our head is trying to keep us safe, we start to breathe really, really short little breaths. So if we can breathe down into our bellies, like that newborn baby, if we can breathe that our tummy nearly comes out, it sends a message back to this little alarm, don't you worry, everything is fine. And when he calms down, we calm down. And that leaves us more in control to face school and to face any homework we might be getting and any jobs we have to do. Oh, uh, Dr. Mary, hi, it's Buddy here. <laughs> um, just when you say that thing there about your, your tummy and stuff, um, I was actually saying to Michelle earlier as well how when I wake up first thing in the morning, my tummy feels a little sick and I don't feel like eating my breakfast. But I do know that once I get into school, I really enjoy myself. So uh, what can I do to make these funny feelings go away? Oh, buddy, and again, I don't think you're the only one who feels that way sometimes in the mornings or sometimes when we're pulling up maybe in the car to the school gate and you get those feelings. That is really natural. And again, that's this little alarm system um, trying to prepare you if he's thinking, oh, is everything going to be okay today? But there are a few things you can do that can really help you. So the first one is an idea called the hug button. The hug button. So whatever grown-ups you have at home and draw a love heart on their wrist and you get a little love heart drawn on your wrist too and you agree with your grown-up, whether it's mom or dad or granny, that any time you miss each other if you're in school that day, you touch your wrist, that little hug button, and you're sending a little secret magical hug back to them. And it can just help you to remember, I'm not alone, I have my grown up there thinking of me as well. And it can give you a little bit of courage to face the day. Ah, oh, that's really sweet. I really like that. You know what? I'm going to do it right now. Hang on. Where's my... <laughs> there. I'm going to write my little love heart and I'm going to tell my mom as soon as I get home that she has to draw one on her wrist too. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea, buddy. And there's also another lovely one um, I think I heard you talk about as well before called Worries in My Pocket. Oh, that's a lovely one, Michelle. So what you do is if if you're feeling nervous about school and you think about all the things that might be making you a little bit nervous and you write them on pieces of paper or your grown up can do that for you. So you write them down and you put them all on the pieces of paper and then they take the pieces of paper and they put them in their pocket and they keep them in their pocket the whole day you are in school. So they're carrying those worries for you. I would say to the boys and girls, it really helps. But if your grown-up puts them in their pocket and mines them for you, and um, they hold them for you. And it just means you're lighter in your day and you don't have to worry so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so maybe, I don't know, it's because I'm not sure if school will be exactly like it was before. It's just things are so different now, Dr. Mary. It just worries me, the whole not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, See, buddy, I think we all get a little bit nervous of things we don't know. Things that might be different and things that might have changed. And again, it's that little place in the center of our brain. This little alarm system in the middle of your brain, buddy, it's like the smoke alarm in your house. So you know the way your mum might have a smoke alarm in her house. And if she burns the toast in the toaster... Oh, she's done that before. (laughs) Mum always does that. (laughs) (laughs) I do that too. I do that too. So I think there's a lot of mums out there do it. Um, (laughs) But this part of your brain is exactly the same. So it doesn't know if you've just burnt toast or if the house is burning down, it responds. So sometimes when things are new and different, this little amygdala, this little warrior inside your brain, he he just, he gets a little bit worried and that's what it is. So again, you're, you're breathing, you're having your little hug button, talking to your grown-ups about it it all helps and remember every time you feel scared keep thinking of all the things that you do know like will your best friend be there your other friends your teacher the yard all the things that won't have changed yeah Yeah, you're really you're, you're so right there because i suppose in a way maybe the kids could think about and focus on being 
in school and not think about the going to school because I think sometimes it's that you know like, like Buddy was saying he gets the pains in his tummy and he doesn't feel like eating his breakfast and then it's the walk to school and it all builds and trying to walk through the gate I suppose maybe if they could think about how happy and content they know they are once they're through the school gates sitting at their desk with their friends around and doing the subjects and the things that they enjoy yeah exactly your friends and you know PE and maybe playing out in the yard what was your favourite game to play yeah. before and I wonder when you play that game again or could oh. you play a different game think of all the fun bits because there's so much fun to be had in school yeah there's so much fun I love everything about school and I'm so <laughs> excited so I'm going to focus on the fun yard stuff when I get to do art when I get to do PE that's a great idea Dr Mary yeah. Oh, I can imagine you are just going to settle back in perfectly, Buster. <laughs> and but, uh, Dr. Mary, I do know that I love school when I'm there, like Michelle said, but um, I am finding it hard to feel normal about playing with my friends in the yard again. I mean, doing all the things we used to do. Why is that? Uh, again, you know, it's been a strange time for everybody. So we've been together in our little house, but we haven't been seeing other people. And when you get um, settled with not seeing other people, sometimes it just becomes a little bit scary. And we have to find our inner brave, even for going back to seeing friends that we love. But every one of us has our little inner brave inside us. And sometimes we just have to remind ourselves, oh, I can do this. And let's get out of my comfort zone a little bit and give it a try. Use my inner brave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Mary, I have to say, that all sounds amazing. So I've got my hug button. I can tell my parents about all the things going on in my head. And then they can actually physically carry my worries for me. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, these are so good. Do you have any more tips that could help me or anyone else listening feel better? Well, there's another one called Pebble in My Pocket. So you and your grown-up go out into the garden or out into the park. And you choose two pebbles that look really alike. And you okay. put one pebble in your pocket, or right. you can pop it in your pencil case. And your grown-up puts the other pebble in theirs. And anytime you're missing them, you just give your pebble a little squeeze. Oh, and it can help as well. That's, that's so cool. I'm definitely going to go out and find two pebbles after this show. Give one to my mom and keep one for myself. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's great to have real concrete things that you can do that can kind of help you feel that bit safer and, and happier. Because, you know, I suppose over the last few months, everyone has got out of their normal routines. You know, even I found it really hard to get everyone up and get everyone dressed and out the door. It was actually nice not having to go to bed so early, you know. Uh, but it's probably a good idea to start getting nighttime routines and normal bedtimes back again during the week now that we're all getting back into to school routine and that. Oh, Michelle, it is. And I know what you mean. Isn't it lovely? You, letting that routine go is lovely for a yeah. while. But, you know, I think we all get to the point we kind of like a little bit of routine in our lives. And um, it's good for us. And, you know, remember I was telling you about that little amygdala, that little alarm. He loves routine. It makes him feel safe. So if we put routines into our lives, so if we say, okay, you know, I'm getting up this morning and I know what I like to have for my breakfast. I'm going to go to bed at night, maybe before bed, what am I going to do? My bath, my story, you do the same thing each night. That little amygdala, that little alarm, it makes him feel, oh, isn't the world lovely and safe? <laughs> and when he's happy, we're happy. And you know, Mary, maybe maybe it's a good idea for kids to actually maybe get involved in deciding the plan of action for the week. You know, maybe they work out, you know, uh, uh, what's going to happen each day before school, after school, maybe what you need for your school bag, get your uniform ready, Exactly. That's so good for you. Even lunches. You know, while we've been off, so many of us have been doing lots of different cooking and different baking and doing all this stuff. This is a great time to say, you know what, I'm going to start doing my own lunches. When we think about it, over lockdown, we've had opportunities to do lots of things that maybe we weren't doing before lockdown. And I think our mums and dads have probably realised that it's good for us to take on new things and to, to take on new challenges. Challenges. You know, kids doing new stuff reminds everyone just how strong they are and how capable they are. And that is so important. Yeah. Oh, because I love knowing what I could eat for little lunch and then what I'm supposed to eat for <laughs> big lunch and just lunch. I just love lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh yeah, lunches. But yeah, oh lunches are one of the best bits of school. Yeah. <laughs> So I think, Mary, there are loads of things that kids can do to get themselves back into the school routine. And I, I suppose they also need to give themselves just that little bit of time to, to settle back in and not expect too much. And to know, you know, there may be falling feelings, but with time, things will settle back down again. Oh, I as well. And remember that your teachers know this. They really do. And really, they're very aware we're all settling back in. Every one of us, teachers, the principals, the SNAs, the students, everybody's just taking a bit of time to settle back in. Oh, Mary, that's given me such confidence to go back into school. I, I feel so much more relaxed now. And like you said, a routine is really important. Yeah, oh, I'm definitely going to contact my inner brave. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Mary, so much for today. It's really great to hear all your super advice. And I really think that so many kids and their parents will have found this really helpful as they get back to school and settle back into a happy and an enjoyable routine. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Hey, Mary, before you go, what's your favourite colour? Blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bye. Thanks so bye. much, Dr. Mary. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> It's time to r- 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 rewind, recap, rethink time. Yeah. Here we go, yo. Wow, I feel so much better after talking with Dr. Mary. It's great to hear that most kids have mixed feelings about going back to school too. And that it's really normal to feel excited, but also a little nervous. Yeah, and I didn't know that even adults feel this way sometimes when they have to go back to work after holidays. And it is a bit weird now because of coronavirus, but Dr. Mary said to focus on being in school rather than going to school because I know I'm happy when I'm in school. And to focus on things that are still the same. I still have the same classmates. I go out to the same yard every day. I have PE. I have all the fun activities with my teacher. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Focusing on what we do know and finding our inner brave. <laughs> and if we were feeling a bit worried, we can do our belly breathing. Yeah! <laughs> Let's bring out our inner brave. Yeah! And it's also good to remember why our bodies do funny things when we're feeling nervous, that it's just our brain trying to protect us. It's the fear part of the brain called the amygdala. And Mary said to think of it as our inner warrior trying to protect us. And that, well, sometimes he can get it wrong though. Kind of like the fire alarm in our house. Sometimes it's not sure if the whole house is on fire. (laughs) Or, oh, maybe my mom's just burnt a piece of toast again. (laughs) But, but we can talk to our brain and the inner warrior and say, hey, thanks so much for looking after us. But there's no danger in school. And that everything is okay. Yeah, and I love that Dr. Mary had loads of physical stuff we could do too. uh, That could help us settle back into school. I loved when she talked about the pebbles. I'm definitely going to get one for me, one for my mom. And when I'm feeling a little bit worried, I can give it a little squeeze. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and I love what Dr. Mary said about using the worry in my pocket. Where I can write or maybe even draw any of the worries I might have in my head on a piece of paper and then give this to my mom and dad and they can put it into their pocket so that they can literally help carry my worries. And don't forget she said to plan out your day. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to ask my mom, can I help plan all my lunches for the week? That'll be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm going to get back into routine again. Like going to bed on time so that way I can get up nice and early and start planning out my day. Like uh, making my bed organizing lunch, sorting out the school uniform, and then, ooh, maybe thinking about what music should I listen to on the walk or drive into school. Uh, what about the Kids Are All Right podcast? Oh, <laughs> good job, Buster. <laughs> it's time to... Rewind, we can rethink time. Yeah. Here we go, yo. Hey, guys, it's that time again. It's time to tickle your funny bone. <laughs> I'm Abby. I'm 10 years old, and this is my drip. Why did the boy eat his homework? Because his teacher told him it was a piece of cake. (laughs) My name's Emily. I am 11 years old and here's my joke. Why do bees have sticky hair? Because they use honeycombs. (laughs) Hi, my name's Robert and I'm 12 years old. Why did the M&M want to go to school? To become a smarty. Yeah, those jokes were absolutely hilarious. 
So we've learned loads today. Laugh lots. And now it's time to give our brains a massage. Are you guys ready for this week's mini mindfulness moment? Ah, oh, yeah. Okie dokie, Bram Stokey. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all well. My name's Louise. And welcome to this episode of mini mindfulness moments. Today's episode is called Tree Claps. Are you ready to begin? Now I want you to do three loud claps. And notice how your hands feel. My hands feel tingly and warm. Now do three more loud claps. Notice how your hands feel. And three more loud claps. Notice how your hands feel. Mine feel even more tingling and a little bit stinging and warm. Well done, you did so well. And bye for now. See you next time. Do you know, it's been great today. Thanks to all the kids who sent in their audio clips. And do you know, if you have something you want to tell us, we want to hear a story, a question or your favourite joke. We'd love to hear from you. All you have to do is record it in the voice recorder app on a parent's smartphone and then email it into us. The email is in our show notes. Yeah, make sure to check out our website, www.thekidsareallright.ie <laughs> for more details about sending in your clips and you'll find loads of more info about the show and everything and everyone we talk to. We really hope you enjoyed this week's show and learned loads. If so, then tell all your friends. Yes, indeed. And remember, guys, try to be healthy, be well, and be happy. <laughs> See you next time on The Kids Are All Right. It's time to air the chair in the car. Or wherever you are. <laughs> Let's rock. <laughs> To listen to the Kids Are Alright podcast, all you have to do is click on the link in our bio and choose your favourite way to listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, or on all the major platforms. Why not take a listen with the kids?